This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place for creative professionals to build a portfolio online. Last time I did a desk tour, it was our minimal MacBook Pro setup in a closet at home. But today we are at the studio, we've got lots of room. Here's our full-blown production photographer, filmmaker, podcaster desk setup. This desk is all designed around the brand new iMac 27 inch from 2020. This model is the 3.6 gigahertz, 10 core Intel i9 processor. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and the AMD Radeon Pro 5700 TX GPU with 16 gigs of RAM. It also has the nano texture screen, which if you saw my unboxing of this thing, I absolutely love. It cuts down on the glare a lot. And I think if your office doesn't have ideal lighting control, it is absolutely worth the upgrade. This iMac is actually the review unit that I featured in my unboxing video. So I don't get to keep this one. My iMac is a little bit older. My next upgrade will be the MacBook Pro because that's what I end up spending a lot more time editing on. I love having a larger desktop like this, but I just don't sit in one place as often as I'd sometimes like. But you know what? If you're thinking about upgrading your iMac this year, I'd go ahead and do it because Apple Silicon is not gonna be coming to the big desktops first. I'm pretty positive we're gonna see it on the laptops. So if you need a new iMac right now, I'd say don't be afraid to buy one. This is the pinnacle of what Intel Macs are going to be like. It's gonna be rock solid stable and Apple promises to keep supporting them so it should last you as long as you need it to. Now, whichever Mac you're thinking about buying, I highly recommend upgrading the internal storage. I know it's expensive, but you can't really do it afterwards. And I just find it so valuable not to have to move data between drives on externals. However, that still happens. So in the back of this thing, I have a 12 South backpack, just a little shelf that stays on the back of the iMac where I can store hard drives, including the many five terabyte Seagates that we go through constantly. We buy at least four of these every year for all of our photography and video. I find that even though these are spinning disks, they are fast enough to edit Lightroom or Capture One catalogs after, so photography works just fine. If you're editing video though, for that I use the Samsung T5 SSD drive. Mine's two terabytes, get the biggest one you can because you're gonna fill it up fast. And how about the stand that it's sitting on? This is the Curve Riser from 12 South. It gives you a little space for storage like tech accessories and also very helpfully gets the screen height up to a more comfortable viewing angle for better ergonomics. Before I move on from the iMac, it also has the new T2 chip inside, which is amazing for hardware video acceleration. That's not even in the iMac Pros right now. So in some cases, these new like consumer level iMacs actually perform faster than the iMac Pros. So yeah, today we're talking about a professional editing setup and I still think for a lot of people, the regular iMac makes more sense right now. The mouse and keyboard here come from Logitech. It is the MX Master 3, which I've been using the MX series since college. I am probably never gonna switch. And brand new to me is the Logitech MX Keys. I hadn't used this keyboard before, but I have been very impressed with it. The feeling of the travel is excellent. I always appreciate Logitech's ability to stay connected with the machine. It has Bluetooth for simplicity's sake, but there's also a optional dongle that you can plug into the USB port so that you have a much more stable connection and it's never losing its signal with the computer. For audio, these are the Tuck premium powered speakers made by Kanto. This is a Canadian company making beautifully designed speakers that also happen to sound great. I find they're somewhere in between monitors and bookshelf speakers. Like they're not a perfectly neutral signal. There is some color to it, but that also makes music and movies sound a little bit better. When I'm mastering audio, I like to hear it from a variety of different sources. So I'll listen to it through these speakers and headphones and AirPods and in the car. It gives me the best idea of what the audience is gonna be hearing themselves. The Tuck speakers feature onboard DSP, AMT tweeters, and a five and a quarter inch aluminum drivers. And they also support active crossover if you wanna add a sub. It's nice that it has a ton of input options, including Bluetooth, dedicated phono, RCA, and optical. Kanto offers the speakers in black and white and has these matching stands to bring them a little bit closer to ear level. The desk also got a lighting upgrade. This is the Dyson Light Morph desk lamp. It has a lot of smart features in it, including auto on and then automatic adjustments of brightness and color temperature. So as the day progresses and it gets darker outside, the light gets warmer. And when it's bright outside, the light gets cooler to match the daylight. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with indoor lighting is when the light color temperatures don't match in a home. When they can match and complement each other, it goes a really long way to making it feel more natural and less like artificial lighting. The head is fully adjustable so it can switch between being a task lamp and an ambient light. Fortunately, it just has enough clearance to move over top of the speakers. And then if you wanna turn it on and off, there is just a simple touch button. For charging phones and other Qi compatible 
compatible wireless devices, this was one of my favorite discoveries. This is the Nomad Base Station Pro. It's a full surface wireless charger that can charge up to three devices at once with up to 7.5 watts charging. The most common problem I've had with wireless chargers is you put your phone on it, and then you wake up in the morning and it doesn't charge. So I've never had that issue here. Wherever I put my phone or my AirPods, they do end up charging because it has such a large area that works. Of course, the new iPhone 12s have MagSafe, which is interesting and exciting, but it's cool that you can have three devices on this pad all charging at once. And Nomad's design of the Base Station Pro is just really clean and elegant, and it looks great on the desk. Next, we'll talk about the audio production gear, but first, a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're gonna to go to all the trouble of having an ultimate creative desk setup, you know what, you should probably also have an ultimate creative website. And Squarespace is great for that. In just a few minutes, you can start designing and customizing everything about your site to host either your filmmaking reels, your photography portfolio, or podcast. And you get all of the stats, analytics, SEO tools, all the tech stuff that you don't wanna to have to worry about is just built into Squarespace. They can take care of everything from your domain registration to your hosting, to all of the mobile responsive stuff that you shouldn't have to worry about to make sure that your site works on phones just as well as it does on the desktop. I've been using Squarespace for a decade now and if you want to try it yourself, head to squarespace.com and start your free trial today. And when you feel ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman. If you use offer code Tyler Stallman, you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. One of the pieces to this desk setup that I'm most attached to is this little audio rack that my dad made for me. Basically, we got the measurements of a standard audio rack, bought those screw mounts, and put them inside a wooden box with wheels on the bottom so it can move around. By sticking to the standard rack size, I know that there's a lot of different accessories I can put in here, and there's tons of flexibility in terms of what this can actually be. He also installed this little drawer that can just roll out. Right now inside, I've got my headphones. They are the Sony WH-1000X Mark II, which I know we're on a Mark IV right now, but you know, I've been pretty happy with these. So I, don't, I don't feel any pressure to upgrade here. On the bottom shelf of this rack unit, I've got a ton of old hard drives. These are all the backups of the portable drives that we've been keeping as well as an old Drobo. Again, these are the backup copies. Make sure that you keep the primary and backups in different locations so that you know some copy is always safe. A lot of the video content we create needs to move back and forth between myself, my wife, editors, clients. So usually we need to rely on portable drives, but eventually we also need to store all this work for the long run. For that, we use the Synology S1819+. Plus. This is an eight bay NAS network attached storage unit. So I can fill it with hard drives, which we have. It's loaded up with Seagate Iron Wolf drives. And basically this lets us have a safe, reliable, redundant backup situation. So we can have two of these drives die and the rest of the data is still safe. We can just hot swap them out. Its CPU is quad core 2.1 gigahertz and the RAM is expandable up to 32 gigabytes. It also has four built-in gigabit ethernet ports, but you can upgrade those with a 10 gigabit ethernet port if you wanna do things like edit video directly off the NAS. This is typically where we keep our archives. So we're using things like Lightroom catalogs to reference old photos, and it is definitely fast enough for that. This is the second Synology that we've used. The last one was a four bay unit. And uh, just like on the iMac, I'd recommend getting as much storage space as you can. I've always regretted not buying a bigger one right from the beginning. Get the biggest bay unit you can, so the most possible drives, and then each drive should be as big as possible. Let's say if you just buy enough for your storage needs now, you're going to have to upgrade it, and that's way more expensive than just upgrading it right from the start. Now, podcasting. The gear I have might be a little overcomplicated for you because I also use it for video production, and I got it a little while ago. This year, there is a, a lot more flexibility in terms of what you could buy. Just recently, Sure announced the MV7, which is a USB version of the most popular podcasting mic, the Sure SM7B. I haven't tested it yet. I'm just saying that you don't necessarily need everything I've got here to get the same level of audio quality. That said, I, I love what I've got, so let's take a look at it. First, for recording, this is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3. It has the best preamps I've ever heard, which is important with certain microphones, like the Shure that I mentioned, or my Heil PR40. That's my microphone of choice. I've been using it for years. It has a great audio profile. It's a dynamic mic, so it rejects a lot of the background. But the Heil and the Shure both require very loud preamps. You have to apply a lot of gain. That can mean a lot of noise if you don't have good preamps. 
So what I like about the MixPre-3 is you can turn it up loud enough so that you don't have to add any additional preamps in the line to get the levels loud enough. That said, I also have a DBX-286S, which uh, does apply more volume to the line. It's a compressor and a limiter so that you can control the level that is going into your recording. I've been using it a lot less ever since I got the MixPre-3, but I, I still like it as a piece of hardware and I like running things through it. It's especially useful if you're doing live streaming. By the way, the MixPre-3 has been updated. I don't have version two yet, but I've tried it and it, it's better, so go get it. There's some amazing features on it. Also, holding up the mic is a KNM boom arm. Don't get a cheap boom. I've gone through a few that were terrible. Just get a good one right away. The desk itself and also the chair are both from EQ3. So the desk is the Nova desk. We used to have similar IKEA white desks, but they felt a lot cheaper. We really noticed the difference once we switched to this better quality desk. It doesn't shake as much. So uh, before I'd sometimes like hear the vibrations if I kind of moved too much on it while I was recording podcast. This is a lot more stable. And your chair, don't cheap out on your chair. You will end up with back problems eventually. So this is the Herman Miller Mira chair. Anything from Herman Miller works really great. I love their whole product line and we've had this one for quite a few years now. So that's my desk right now. Let me know what you guys would change about it. And if you wanna know more about all of the creative tech that I use, search for the Stallman podcast in your podcast player of choice. I bring on other creators, YouTubers, filmmakers, photographers, and we just talk about tech. So I'll see you guys over there or in the next video.